If you're not able to read the text in, let's say, the last video I uploaded, then you probably are not viewing the video in a higher resolution, and you're probably not viewing the video in an area large enough to be able to see it. Um, on the bottom right of every video that you see, there is an option to... Uh, one of them is to change the size of the video. There's one that you can make it full screen, but, I mean, hardly anyone, I think, really does that unless they're watching a movie or something. Then there's a gear icon. That will let you change the resolution. And if you haven't done this by hand at any point, YouTube sort of defaults to having the videos play at, like, 480p or sometimes even lower and if that's the way you've been viewing all my videos the whole time that's probably why you haven't even noticed the videos I say oh I'm making this in 60 frames a second well you can't see any 60 frames a second videos unless you're viewing them in 720p or 1080p so um, just wanted to let you know that um, also like you can't read small text if you're viewing it in, in like 480p. You're not going to be able to read that text. So, okay. Having said that, um, I also wanted to talk about Microsoft with their whole OneDrive thing. And how they really try to cram it down the throats of everyone. You can't use their new Office programs without it completely defaulting to using OneDrive. Which I think is really absurd, because... their code of conduct for the files that you store on OneDrive are draconian. You can't have documents that have swear words in them. You can't have any pictures that have partial nudity in them. So let's say if you took some pictures of some people on the beach, or you, you, you took your family to the beach, and you had pictures of people on the beach. Well, you know, that violates their code of conduct. You can't have anything that talks positively about firearms. You can't say anything negative about Microsoft or their employees. Um, the list goes on and on about things that you cannot have in those files. And if you do, they can delete those files at their whim, and they can even delete your Microsoft account. It's, it's absurd that they expect people to use OneDrive. I mean, what kind of novel have you seen written for adults that has no swearing in them? What kind of novels have no swearing in them at all? I mean, do they, they, it's like they expect everything to be Disney friendly, something that you could see on the Disney Channel or something like that. Everything has to be kid friendly. OneDrive equals kid friendly, and yet they expect you 
to have every file you store on it be to those standards. It's, it's, it's really absurd. And they're trying to build OneDrive into the OS more and more. It's actually a major pain to shut off OneDrive. You gotta go through a lot of hassle to do it. You can do it, but it's a hassle. Um, Google Drive doesn't have these sorts of draconian policies. Dropbox doesn't have these draconian policies. You know, most of the cloud services out there don't have these draconian policies. Microsoft does, and I can't really wrap my mind around it. Um, I've been uh, testing, beta testing Windows 10 Preview, and I'm part of their little insider program. I give them a lot of feedback on it. And they kind of have some good things going, but they also seem to not really have any clue about what people want. They'll they'll ask people, like in the Insider Hub, they'll ask people, oh, well, how do you want your photos and videos auto-enhanced when you look at them in the Photos app? I'm like, I don't want them auto-enhanced at all. But they don't even give you that sort of thing. No, no, how do you want them auto-enhanced? It's like, hello? Um, the start menu. Uh, you can't just move things to that menu. They make it a major pain to get anything into that menu, and they don't, still don't... And then in places, the only... They think that documents is the only thing in your home directory that you would want to ever see quickly. You can't add anything to it. Um... I don't know, it's just, it's just, it's just absurd that the whole, their, their setup is, you know, I, at first I was excited because they got rid of the start screen, but I'm starting to think that them skipping Windows 9 and going right with 10, um, I know it's just a number, but they should have at least tried going with some of the ideas of 9, but they, they dumped it and went right with 10, and it's like, I'm having a feeling that Windows 10 is going to be worse than Windows 8.1. That's a funny thing too. Windows 8 didn't ever have any issue with my hardware. Then when 8.1 came out, uh, Windows Explorer, I don't mean Internet Explorer, but Windows Explorer crashes like every 18 hours or so. It's not an exact science to when it crashes, but it doesn't actually crash, it just kind of errors out. The clock stops, stops working, the icons in the taskbar get all jumbled together and you can't use them. And if you move windows around the screen, it's about four frames a second. <laughs> and uh, in Windows 10, it only takes about somewhere between 8 and 12 hours for this th sort of thing to happen. Now, recently I found out that it happens much, much less, and I don't know the exact timing on it yet. If you don't have the desktop background set to change. If you have it set for one image the whole time, then you don't run into problems. <laughs> it's just like, wow, that, that, something that's that used is that buggy, <laughs> you know? Um, and they still not brought, brought back any sort of decent look to uh, any of the window decorations. It's, it's like they've went back to I mean, there were more options to customize the look of Windows in Windows 95. You still can't change any of the fonts on anything. Um, they give you the option to change the window decorations to whatever color you want, but if it's but the text in the win in those window decorations is always black. So you know, unless you make something a pastel color, you can't read the text. And I don't. There, there are no more effects on any of it. I mean, they they still have not brack, brought back air, the arrow theme. It's just weird. Um, let's see. Uh, it just seems the only thing Microsoft really has going for it right now is their, their whole holographic technology thing that they're trying to shove forth. And unless they really get that thing off the ground, 
um, and Windows 10 is their their flagship deal. Oh, look, we're we're offering it for free to everyone. Well. If it's still crap, why would anyone want to switch to it? You know? They're they're wanting all this feedback from people, but they don't it's like they don't care about it. And you go to their forums, they say, Oh well well if you if you're wondering why they're doing this, just just leave them feedback. It's like, yeah, but we don't get any feedback back. They never let us know why they're doing things the way they're doing them. You know? Um I may not like Linux very much, especially because software availability is crap on it. And all of the free alternatives available for Linux, or just about all the free alternatives available for Linux, act like programs that are at least 12 years old. I mean, GIMP is a joke. I mean, it, it doesn't even have half the options that Photoshop does, even with script foo and uh, things like adjusting contrast, brightness, hue, even sharpness uh, is like from standards from the 90s. You turn up the contrast and you'll watch some colors turn fluorescent and some colors will turn white. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's just these old standards. They're not going to do anything about it. Uh, the the mindset behind programs made for Linux is well if it's not broke don't fix it um, and you know if it if it kind of works then they'll just kind of leave it that way then if you complain about it people will say well it's free you shouldn't complain well you know why use Linux then <laughs> you know oh well you can run it in Wine or uh, some other emulation layer or something it's like I'm not running the programs I need in an emulator sorry. Um, but if enough people hate what Microsoft is doing, I have a feeling that more companies will probably move over to having their products available for Linux. But who knows? I mean, Adobe is particularly nasty about offering their stuff for Linux, so... Anyway, um... But Microsoft, with their whole OneDrive thing and their code of conduct for files, it's like... To me, OneDrive should be called Disney Drive. Because that's the standards it has to come to. So, Heck, though, even Disney, you know, has less draconian standards than they do. <laughs> so, anyway.